everybody welcome back to the channel welcome back to another video by me JK are you subscribed to the channel and if you're not please subscribe join the family click the notification bell let us get us to 50k 100k by the end of this month this month what are you saying by the end of the year i would really 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 love to clock 50k for the jk fam at the end of the year so please that is all on you if you can retweet repost do all the things that you need to do i would really really appreciate that from the bottom of my heart but to the 25,000 of you that are here, thank you so much for being here. It is, I think, 7 o'clock at night and I'm filming this and I'm thinking, you know, I'm here, might as well. I'd been recording all day. I took a long break. My sister and my friend came, my sister, yeah, that's true. My sister and my friend came through today and we hung out and we had a couple of drinks. So if I'm not as coherent, you know what it is but uh, yes this is for the book readers this is for the people who love to read I am here to share with you my current reads for 2022 what I have read and what I am yet to read so I'm glad to have you here if you have subscribed let's get into the video all right getting into the video the first thing I have a TBR list and you guys know if you watch my video content you know that I do not do a TBR every month because I have a daytime job guys I got things to do and I'm not just doing book content on the channel I do a lot of other things and I'm also active on social media as well so I cannot just do a TBR every single month so what I typically do is do a TBR every two to three months dependent on how much I've read. These are the books, as you can see. But the first thing I'm gonna share with you are the books I already have read. And I've read them on vlogs. I have spoken about them on my channel, so I'm not gonna get into too much detail about the books that I already have read. But I will give you the star rating for the books, and then I'll move on to the books that I'm yet to read. I will move on to my TBR list for the next two say February March I might read more I might read less but it is what it is so for myself I am on Goodreads just in case you do not know I am on Goodreads I accept and follow everybody so please do if you are on Goodreads and you're a reader please do uh, add me on Goodreads I would love to know what you're reading what you're finding interesting at the moment I would really be excited to see that um, but yeah I'm on Goodreads and I give my recommendations and I also tell you what I'm currently reading at the time and one book I actually finished this morning at 1 a.m. and we're gonna talk about that the first book that I finished I think I finished this book on the 30th if I'm not mistaken but I added it into uh, 2022 because I'm in child no how do you finish a book like the day before or two days before and not add it? Like, I, feel, I would feel bad. This is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I have spoken about it on my channel multiple times. This follows four siblings who... It's, it's just really based on family dynamics. Taylor Jenkins Reid wrote... Um, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and she wrote Daisy Jones and the Six but for me this is my first read of hers and apparently one of the characters in this book is prevalent in uh, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo which I have and I will read but this one follows four siblings over one day so essentially what happens is the book is die is um, split into two so you have uh, two time spans where you follow the history of the parents of these siblings Nina, Jay, Hud and Kit I believe and um, it just follows their life with their parents family dynamics really really love it not going to get into too much detail because I've spoken about it in a vlog or two or three even um, but it follows their life what happens consequentially over one night from the beginning of that day to the end of that day one of the 
uh, siblings of the Riva family. Nina Riva is actually having a party that night and all the siblings are well known. They are surfers. One of Nina, the elder sibling, is a supermodel and all of them are well known because their father, Mick Riva, who is the supposed character that features in Seven, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, um, he is also featured in this book and it pretty much discusses family dynamics, them growing up from how their parents met that time span to 1983, around the time that they're grown and they're in their 20s and they're having this epic party that ends up in a fire at the end of it all the following morning. So really, really interesting. I loved this book. I really enjoyed it. Um, it wasn't the book, you know, it wasn't epic, but I really enjoyed the novel. I loved the sibling dynamics. I loved how flushed out the characters were. Easy to understand. Um, no particular plot. In it, Realistically, there's no certain plot, but it's really character, the descriptions, it's character driven. And I really loved how she did that with these characters. Loved it. I rated it a three out of five or three and a half out of five. My rating is on Goodreads. So you can check that out there. The next book that I read after that is this one. And you saw this in a vlog. You saw it in my, I think, taking stock video. This is The Inheritance of Orcadia Divina. This is a magical realism novel that follows the Montoya family. We follow the head of the family, the matriarch, who is Orcadia Divina. She is pictured here. Well, it's not her pictured here, it's Marimar, but that's not the point. Um, it follows Orcadia Divina, and the book again is uh, split into two dual time spans where you can read about Orcadia growing up in Ecuador as a um, descendant of the Montoya family. The book opens with Orcadia Divina calling on all her descendants, her grandchildren, her children, to come over to her house because she is dying. And not only is she dying, I mean, the magical realism is wild, right? Not only is she dying, but she's actually turning into a tree. And for me, it was the first time reading magical realism and I was what? I was taken. The writing is a little bit different for me, so it took me about 20, 30 pages for me to get into it, but I really dived into it as soon as I did, and I loved this book. I rated it a five out of five. It talks about Orcadia calling in her descendants so that they can receive her gifts, so that she can talk to them, so that they can receive her gifts before she passes on. And it takes you down a road of not only Orcadia's past and her history, but it takes you down the road of the gifts and the inheritances that her family members, her great-grandchildren, have taken from her and when they go back to her home and they realize that oh my god they've developed this they start delving into the history of the montoya family and they travel to ecuador and when they do things start happening that's all i'm gonna say and uh it's amazing amazing it tracks into orcadia's past life her lovers her husbands um, it's beautiful and it's amazing. I really, really enjoyed this one. I really hope you do try it out. You can get it at Exclusive Books. Any of these books you can pick up, pick up at Exclusive Books or Bargain Books. Really, really love this one. Rated it a 5 out of 5. Ah, and then the last book that I read, I'm going to start the next book going forward from tomorrow, probably, or tonight later on. The last book that I read is this one. This is Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. Gents, girls, gents, what? I really loved this novel. Now, I'm somebody who is not opposed to reading romance novels, and this is a romance novel, but the thing is, I'm really awkward about reading very smutty romance novels that really go in about the sexual scenes and this and that and the other, and it makes me a bit, a bit uncomfortable, uh, but I read them anyway, but this approaches black love trauma, disability, embroils it all together, and second time love, you know, like like literally trying again with somebody that you had a relationship with before. 
trying again second time around and it is insanely beautiful i absolutely love this novel so so much seven days in june by tia williams follows the life of eva mercy and shane hall mm. jean vieve <laughs> so eva mercy is actually known as genevieve but it's actually pronounced as jean vieve and uh, it follows their lives growing up. It follows mostly her, and she is an erotica fiction writer. So she writes about vampires and 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 dragons and all of all of that stuff. And um, she has a history with another author who's very famous and very well known, even more so than her. And his name is Shane. So they reconnect. And they reconnect in the literary world based on, you know, they, there's an event and they both attend the event and uh, they reconnect after 15 years having been apart. And uh, it dives into Eva's past a little bit, her trauma, generational trauma from her mother and her grandmother and her great-grandmother and disabilities and Shane himself is not is also one without you know not without trauma himself and his past and his history and how they reconnect and love each other still and give each other a second chance at love and at romance in such an amazingly beautiful way I loved this book. I really loved this book. I rated Orcadia and this one five out of five, but this one definitely rings in my heart and it's probably gonna stay there for quite a while. I've been thinking about Eva and Shane for a while now, okay? I think about them all the time. I finished reading this one at 1 a.m. this morning and I loved it. Um, it follows love, black love, dealing with trauma, disability, dealing really just with difficult things that black families are faced with as well. Uh, all families generally are faced with, but here we're talking about black love and uh, it's beautiful. How they reconnect and find their way back to one another after 15 years is just... The love scenes are written beautifully they're smutty and then there's reading a love scene where you're just like shay what do you even mean bro really really nice i loved this book and i really do think you should try it out i got it for 79 bucks at bargain books and this is a 2021 release so there you go you're welcome all right, so now I'm going to get into my TBR list. So now I don't know too much about these books, but I am going to share with you the books that I'm going to read going forward. One of the books that I am going to read, but it's downstairs and I really don't want to get it, is Atomic Habits. And I'm going to read that one on the side of all the other books that I'm going to read in the next month or two. And I'm really looking forward to reading that one. That is definitely a novel that... A novel, a non-fiction book that a lot of people have spoken about over the last year or so and I'm really looking forward to reading that one. This is the first book that I'm going to start with. Now you guys know I've spoken about the Song of Achilles so I'm not going to get into it so much but I've spoken about it on my channel and I spoke about how I stopped reading it when I was, I even did a dog ear, when I was 24 pages in i stopped reading it i really want to continue i've heard so much good things about this book that i really want to get into it again and i'm gonna push through this time around this is the song of achilles big on tiktok big on uh uh bookstagram big on booktube it's a huge novel this one and uh this follows the story of um, Achilles, but mostly from the perspective of Patroclus, who becomes Achilles' very good friend and companion. I don't know too much more about that, but I'm really, really excited to read more. I love Greek mythology. I really enjoyed Greek mythology when I was in school. Hades, Persephone, listen, I loved it. Zeus, Hercules, all of that Venus and all of that I really really enjoyed it I love Greek mythology and I'm willing to get into it with this 
And I feel like this is going to be a great start because I do also want to read A Thousand Ships and many, many others. So this is going to be a great start for me. So this the next book is another fantasy novel, and this is an African fantasy novel. I spoke about this one again last year on my channel, so I'm not going to get into it as much. I'm now picking it up because I do want to read this novel. This is David Mogo, God Hunter by Sui Davies Oku, Okumbongwa. I'm sorry if I said that incorrectly, but he's a Nigerian author. And this basically follows the fact that uh, gods have fallen down to the earth in Lagos, Nigeria. Um, thousands of chaos reigns when these gods fall down to the earth. David Mogo, who is a demigod and a god hunter, has one task. Capture two of the most powerful gods in the city and deliver them to the wizard gangster Lukman Ajala. Sounds so good. Obviously, I'm assuming this is on fantasy, maybe magical realism, but I'm assuming mostly fantasy. I'm really looking forward to this. I love how floppy it is. I love me a good floppy book. The next book is They Both Die at the End, and this is by Adam Silvera, and this is the best-selling author of History Is All You Left Me, and I've heard so much. Again, this was a book talk, booktube, bookstagram inspired purchase, and this follows the life of Rufus Emeterio and Mateo Torres, who have received bad news that they are going to die in one day. That's how it is. So I don't know if it's mostly fantastical or not, but we're going to read it and we're going to get through it. They're go both going to die today. Mateo and Rufus are total strangers, but for different reasons, they're both looking to make a new friend on their end day. The good news is that there's an app for that. It's called Last Friend, and through it, Rufus and Mateo are about to meet up for one last great adventure, and it sounds amazing. I've heard great things. I love how it's split up. I see multimedia here in terms of texts, and I don't know if it's SMSs, texts, or even emails, but I'm really, really looking forward to it. It seems like it's from the perspective of both Rufus and Mateo. I do not know, but I'm really looking forward to it. And I really like this cover because this is the first cover that I have seen that looks like this and not the blue cover that uh, the people in the West have received. Uh, the next book that I want to read, or even maybe possibly after this last one, this is Hood Feminism. Now, I read Hood Feminism and I stopped at some point, but I really want to get into it. I really, I am a feminist at heart, but I do think we need to talk about feminism a little bit more. And we need to explore feminism when it comes to the black people, black people. Black people. So Hood Feminism looks at feminism for black people. This is feminism for all the black people that society has seemed to have left out. So feminism in terms of poverty and in terms of privilege and class and status and all of that. So I'm really looking forward to this. This is something that I'm going to be dog earing and of course I'm going to add a lot of flags because I do want to learn more from this book. This is Hood Feminism by Mickey Kendall. Notes from the women white feminists forgot. I'm really, really keen on reading this. So, so excited. So excited. So excited. The last book I have, which is so sad because I feel like it's my favorite genre, but out of all the books that I have here, this is the only thriller that I have. And this is Girl A by Abigail Dean. And again, this one is one, I don't think it was that big on TikTok or Bookstagram or anything like that, but it was big for a Bookstagrammer, uh, Booktuber that I watch. And uh, this is Girl A by Abigail Dean. And this follows Lexi Garcy, who doesn't want to think about her family. She doesn't want to think about growing up in her parents' house of horrors. And she doesn't want to think about her identity as Girl A, the girl who escaped. 
When her mother dies in prison and leaves Lexi and her siblings the family home, she can't run from her past any longer. Together with her sister, Evie, Lex decides to turn the house of horrors into a force for good. But first, she must come to terms with her six siblings and with the childhood they shared. Sounds so good. So that's pretty much it from me and my TBR list for at least say the next two months, if not less. I can't have it longer than two months because child, I've already written three. I've already written. <laughs> I can't say longer than two months. So child, I've already read three from this list. So I've got five. So definitely the next two months, no more than that. I need to clean out these five. And yeah, that's my reading list. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to go now. I'm going to have some dinner. I'm going to relax. I'm going to unwind. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please recommend it to people who know books and love books. Please recommend it to people who are on BookTok, Bookstagram, uh, people who are on Goodreads. Let's all join. Let's all be friends. Click subscribe. Also click the notification bell and let us get us to 30,000 at the very least. 30,000 by June. 50,000 maybe by December. We'll see how it goes. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for all your support. I am going to go. I hope you enjoyed this video. And until the next one, I'll see you soon. Okay. Bye.